Hi there, I'm Chef Eric Crowley, owner of the Culinary Classroom in Los Angeles, and today we're going to make eclairs. Let's get started. We're going to need half a cup of milk, half a cup of water, three ounces of unsalted butter, room temperature, and sliced. We're also gonna need one cup of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of sugar, quarter teaspoon of salt, and anywhere between four to five eggs cracked out of the shell. The first thing that we have to make is a very classic dough that the French call pâté chou. We're gonna start off with our water and our milk, get them into a pot, we're gonna bring them up to a boil with our butter. While we're waiting for our water, butter, and sugar mixture to come to a boil, we're gonna get our eggs out of the shell. The reason why I wanna take them out of the shell is because we need to add them in to our dough preparation one at a time, and it's a lot more effective to actually have them out of the shell ready to go rather than to stop every time and crack each egg open up individually. As a general rule with regards to pâté chou, the more eggs you wind up adding into the dough, the lighter and uh, more eggier the dough is going to be. And we'll with, with a lot of baking products as well, baking recipes, if the eggs are at room temperature, they're actually gonna get absorbed into the dough a lot more rapidly. Now our liquid is at a boil, and we're gonna start to add in our dry ingredients, our flour mixture. Really important that you stir the liquid together very briefly. Make sure that the butter and the milk and the water are blended together. Then we're gonna take our flour mixture and dump it all in at once into the pot. I usually keep the flame on a medium to medium high. Start to stir the dough together. It's gonna to lump up initially. And as you continue to stir it, you'll actually see the flour start to absorb all the liquid and start to form a really nice paste. And what we're looking for as far as doneness, this doesn't need to cook for very long. After a few moments, it's gonna wind up rolling around uh, in a ball inside the pot. And when we have that particular consistency, we're ready to take the pot off the heat. Okay. So once the dough starts to absorb all that liquid, you don't see any bits of flour left over in the dough. You can see when I stir it around, it basically starts to form a ball that starts to spin around inside the pot. And the reason why I'm continuing to stir it is because the dough, as you can see from the steam, is very, very hot. And if we start to add the eggs in now, the eggs are going to cook. And we don't want them to cook just yet. We're going to cook them when we pop them into the oven. So stirring it around will actually help cool off the dough. The dough doesn't need to be really ice cold, but you definitely want to have it a lukewarm feel. I typically just use the back of a clean hand and touch the dough. If the dough feels hot against the back of my fingers, I need to cool it off a little bit longer. Dough is definitely cool enough to go. We're going to wind up taking one egg at a time, and the easiest way to determine that when you wind up having them in the shell is just to pour until an egg yolk goes in. You could even add in two at a time. That's fine. No more than two. If you wind up adding in more than two eggs at a time, you'll find that the dough can't absorb the egg rapidly enough. Stir it all around. The dough is gonna to start to get kind of a curdled look to it, and that's absolutely fine. Keep on stirring it. The dough will wind up absorbing the egg, and we're gonna to start to get a really pasty quality. The more eggs that we add in, the shinier the dough is going to be. So this is our pate choux. Really nice, lovely paste quality to it. So now that our dough is prepared, we need to actually get the dough into a uh, pastry bag, and, which makes it the easiest way to actually get our cream puff shape out. Uh, most uh, pastry shops have a disposable pastry bag like this. It's basically a conical piece of plastic that is sealed at the end. We need to cut off this sealed tip, and prior to doing that, we're actually gonna put in a little metal tip that we call a straight tip. It's gonna get dropped into the bag. Then I'm gonna cut off some of the top of the plastic in order to expose the metal tip. Just like that. I'm gonna take the bag and put it into something conical like a measuring cup or this metal bain-marie insert. I'm gonna fold the top of the bag over, and make a little hole on the inside. I'm gonna take my pastry dough, my pâté choux. So some people often are uh, very comfortable or find the necessity to actually utilize a Ziploc bag for this pastry dough. A Ziploc bag will work out fine. 
Um, a tip will not fit into the corner of the Ziploc bag, so you can just put the dough into a Ziploc bag and cut off the corner of the bag and make a makeshift pastry bag. And we wind up taking the bag and bring the cuff back up over the top, pick up the bag, and we start to work the dough towards the corner of the bag or even the corner of the Ziploc bag. I find it's easiest to lay it down on my counter and just go ahead and squeegee it, if, if you will, with your fingertips, get it towards the tip. And we're actually gonna wind up taking the bag and holding it slightly at an angle, again, on a piece of parchment paper that's on a baking sheet. And we're gonna start to basically pipe out a hot dog shape. Right. You wanna make sure that you have it spaced out evenly because it will wind up baking evenly if you have your items evenly spaced. The little tails that we have here, take a little bit of water. Just go ahead and press down on them. Get a little bit of water on your fingertip. And the eclair itself is gonna wind up classically being filled with pastry cream, a link that you'll find uh, on Mahalo as well. Into the oven it goes, 450 for 10 minutes. I've rotated the pan 180 degrees and I'm going to lower the oven temperature from 450 degrees down to 375 and set my timer for another 15 minutes. Once the dough starts to get really nice and golden brown and even has some cracks on the outside of it, it's done. Really important that the dough come out of the oven and the pastries be allowed to cool before you actually start to fill them. And you can see that they're gonna be really nice and golden brown. They wind up rising quite often, or quite a lot. They're gonna have some holes. You can actually even wind up seeing along the side. This is totally normal. These are the cracks that I was talking about. With uh, their larger diameter, they now have a really nice hollow interior that we can use to fill up with various fillings to make our eclairs. Pull them all right off of the pan, get them off of the hot surface, put them onto your cooling rack or put them onto your counter at home and let them cool off. One of the things you'll notice after they cool is that there may actually be some holes along the sides that are totally normal as the pastry starts to bake and expand. I'm going to use one of these holes to actually fill up the eclair and a very common filling is pastry cream. I'm going to take some pastry cream, put it into a uh, piping bag that has a straight tip put in it with the tip of the bag cut off. Take the side of my eclair, go ahead and get that tip right into there and fill it up with pastry cream. If I'm going to fill up another section, I can take a knife and just go ahead and make a little hole in the side. You can even do on the bottom as well and get some more pastry cream in there. Okay. With a clean finger, we're going to wipe off that excess. Uh, common coating is going to be a chocolate ganache. We could actually utilize uh, something like our peanut butter chocolate ganache that you can see a video on. Take a little bit of that ganache. Go ahead and put a little bit on the top. And that is our chocolate eclair. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click on other links so you can get other recipes. If you don't see something that interests you, email a request to requests at mahalo.com. Also be sure to subscribe so you can get lots of wonderful additional information. Thanks and I'll see you soon.